This is Alina Wilson with Xactimate Mastery for Storm Restoration Contractors. In this video I want to demonstrate how to dimension your elevations in the grouping tree in Xactimate. So I'm going to give you an example of a home here. It's a very basic home. It just has two gable ends and then a long section here of course where the eaves to the ground are. So you've got uh, basically two long rectangles right that are the north and the south elevations of the house and then you've got your gable ends which are the east and west elevations and this is a pretty simple house but is can be very effective to illustrate how you can dimension in your grouping tree. So I'm going to go to Xactimate. I've already got an estimate up and running. This is going to be for siding on this one and so we're just going to be dealing with elevations and a couple other things. I've got some salesperson notes here that uh, we can review quickly. You've got the dimensions here. You've got your ground to eave on this gable. You've got the length of the elevation and then of course you're going to need the height of that gable end. And then you've got your long side of the elevation here. There's our ground to eave height and then the, the uh, house is 45 foot in the length. And looks like we are going to be uh, just putting on some uh, siding, some uh, comb, you know, the AC stuff, uh, and some gutters there that uh, I can use the dimensioning tool in Xactimate in order to calculate out the dimensions of these elevations to give me my total sighting. So that's the goal here. So let's go ahead and start working on that front elevation. So I like to kind of split my screen here guys so I can show you. Let me go ahead and do that real quick and uh, we'll just take a look here. If I double click on the front elevation folder it'll bring up the group info front elevation window with the dimensions tab already selected for me. So it brings me right where I need to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new dimension. So I'm going to left click on add. It's going to bring up our add dimensioning box here. And I want you to first of all, this is the first mistake most people make whenever they try to do this, is they leave the shape a box. An elevation, sorry guys, is not a box. A box is a 3D something that has volume to it. That's a box. It's a 3D room or um, even a roof has volume to it. This is a 2D side of the home, right? It's a plane. It doesn't have volume. So you've got to drop down the list here next to box and choose elevation. Okay, so that's the first mistake. People don't know to choose the elevation. And now that you see it, it looks like the side of a house. It's pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to go ahead and go right down here to the elevation length. I'm going to just type in here 24.75. You've got your height of your elevation and I love that Xactimate gives you a little diagram right here saying what dimension they're looking for. And of course that's ground to eave height of 13 foot 7. Now they used point here. I'm going to keep on with that. Let's see, 13.7. And then we've got our gable height which they've measured for us. So 6.7 there is our dimensions. So that will help us to auto calculate the dimensions of that side of the home. Now notice we've got, let's say this is the front elevation, right? You've got a door and you've got two little windows in here. So let me show you if you wanted to account for these missing walls is what they're called, you can. So whenever you go to the add dimension window, you'll see missing walls over here and it says zero because we have not added any yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is left click on missing walls. Then I'm going to add. So here's another mistake a lot of people make or they get really frustrated right here. It's just not very intuitive. So all you need to do is click on the missing walls button and then remember to click on add. So we're adding a new missing wall is what we're doing. The length of that missing wall, let's say it's a three foot by six foot eight door that we're trying to accomplish or trying to remove here. So the length of that door is three even. The height is going to be six apostrophe eight. So we've got my six foot eight there. Opens into exterior when you're dealing with elevations. They always open to the exterior, correct? And uh, we've got just one door in this elevation. Here's a funny glitch that will happen with this type right here. Sometimes Xactimate won't let me tell it what type of opening that I want until I click in the quantity. Okay, So always guys just click in your quantity when you're adding a missing wall and that will free up whatever glitch happens here with you not being able to click on the type of missing wall that you want. Let's talk about these types. The first one here is a window. It Basically you're cutting a square in the middle of a wall just like you would a window, right? It's not 
connected to the floor. The missing wall does not open to the floor, and it doesn't open to the ceiling. It's straight through, opens neither to floor nor ceiling. The next one over is opens to ceiling only. So you've got like maybe a pony wall that opens, um, you know, like a bar area or something like that, where you've got material that comes up from the floor, ends part way in the wall, and then it's open to the ceiling. Today we're dealing with a door, so we're going to choose the third one over here on the right, and that is opens to floor only. So you've got material coming down from, you know, you've got a header or something there, and then you've got uh, the opening that opens to the floor. So that's what these guys mean, these type. And in all reality, it doesn't matter that much for, you know, doing exterior work. Where this would matter, let's say you had a bar opening, you know, you had a full wall that went down to a pony wall, you've got a bar top there. If you were trying to calculate how much crown molding you wanted, you would want to show opens to ceiling only because then it would deduct the crown molding. Also for your doors here, it would deduct your baseboard that would run on the interior of a room. So there's reasons exactly or designed it this way, but for exterior of the homes, it really doesn't matter that much. All we want to do is just deduct the square footage from that piece of the elevation so that we can get correct, you know, on the money siding dimensions here. All right, the last one on the list, which I cannot choose here because my height isn't correct, but the last one on the list is opens to both floor and ceiling. So if you had a part of the wall that was missing from the floor all the way to a ceiling in a room, that would be your opens to floor and ceiling here. And that doesn't happen all that often. So you'll see this guy grayed out uh, probably most of the time. Right, well I've got everything set up the way that I want, so I'm going to left click OK. And then that gave me my door there. Now I want two windows. They look like they're about, I don't know, are they 303's? I'm just going to go with 303's. They might be smaller than that, but that's just easier on me. So three foot by three foot window openings we're going to create. So I'm going to left click add. I'm going to just repeat the process here. The length is three foot. The height is also three foot, opens into exterior, that's great. I'm going to click on the quantity. Now this time we need two windows, so I'm just going to give a little two there for the quantity. And then we do want the opens to neither floor nor ceiling, because we're just cutting a square opening in that wall and taking out that square footage. So openings to neither floor nor ceiling is perfect for your windows. I'm going to left click OK. That's going to build our wall opening or missing walls list. And then I can just close. And I want you to notice that nothing else changes here. This little diagram looks the same, everything like that. You're not going to see much of a change. However, next to your missing walls button, you should see the number three because we've got one door and two windows and it reflects there. So you can be sure that it's going to deduct that square footage. So I'm going to left click OK to add that dimension to our list here. And uh, you know what, I'm done dimensioning the front. It was a simple gable side of the home. That's pretty easy, so I'm just going to go ahead and escape to close my grouping elevation there. And then you should see, if you've done this correctly, a little tape measure on your front elevation icon instead of a folder. So that tells you there's dimensions in this folder now. Let's just throw some vinyl siding here just to see how that would work. I can SDG vinyl. And uh, there's our vinyl siding. And you want to leave your calculator field as W because it's auto-calculating the walls, quote-unquote, of this plane, of this elevation. So W is the correct calculator field variable that you would need. And then it auto-calculates for you how much that side of the home ha contains for the siding. And left-click OK to accept that line item and, uh, of course, add all the other items that I need. However, let's do one more. Let's do this right elevation, which is just a box. That's quite easy. So I'm going to double click on the right elevation folder. I'm going to add to our right elevation. And I'm going to change the shape from a box. Always remember, guys, you've got to change your shape to elevation. That is step one whenever you're trying to get this completed. And we are going to have a length of 45, looks like, alongside of the home here, and then a height of 8 foot 7, or 8.7 is the way the salesperson wrote this one up. So that's fine. And I'm going to leave the gable height as zero. That's all you have to do. It's no rocket science here. Just do not enter a gable height, and it will calculate that as a long rectangle instead of trying to include the gable height. Missing walls, you know, we could throw maybe a couple windows in here. Uh, let's say two 4040 windows. Just change your quantity to two, 
and use that opens to neither floor nor ceiling again. And I can close that window. Looks like my missing walls are good and saved there. My length and my height looks great, so I'm going to left click OK. That added that dimension to my elevation, and I can just hit the escape key on my keyboard, and that will close that. Looks like my right elevation now has dimensions, because I see that tape measure. Go ahead and add that siding, just to confirm that we've got something in there. And yep, there we go, it auto-calculated our siding for us. Let's take a look at what the final report is going to look like whenever you print this, because it does look a little bit different than what you may be used to seeing. And I'm going to run the final draft with or without removal depreciation report. Just going to go ahead and click view. By the way, I'm in the desktop version, guys. That's why you've got your view there. And my estimate's going to look a little strange. I don't have my company header on this estimate. I was just playing around with this. But I do want to show you what it's going to look like on your estimate list. So you've got your front elevation, and it just looks like a little doghouse. Remember, the front elevation had a gable, didn't it? Well, Xactimate doesn't give you the difference whether it does or doesn't. So on our right elevation, even though it's a long rectangle, it doesn't give you the actual picture of what we dimensioned. So it's just the stock, um, you know, gable end of a home that they have that they use here. I did want you to notice that it does calculate your wall square footage there, and then it shows you your missing wall. So whenever you all see missing wall on an estimate, it's because they have either added a door or a window either in Sketch, okay, so in Sketch they also call it a missing wall when you add a door or a window, or if you did the dimensioning just the way that I did, you also will see this missing wall. So that way you can interpret, maybe if you see this on an adjuster report, what exactly the missing wall means. I'm going to go ahead and close this print preview. Just go to File, the top left corner, and click on Exit. I don't use the big red X in the corner ever uh, because I lose estimates that way. So stick away from the big red X, as I always say to do. And then I'm just going to click Close to close that print screen. Hopefully that was helpful in helping you dimension your folders on your grouping tree. There is another video that you can reference, which is the how to create the elevations in Sketch. You can actually create a 2D surface here in Sketch as well. Uh, I think this is enough for one video, so I'm going to leave it here. But uh, there is another video that you can reference about creating that elevation in Sketch, and uh, there's actually several ways to do that. So uh, go look for that video. This has been Alina Wilson with Xactimate Mastery.